With Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 on its final season, I'm sure you guys would hate to miss your shots and have the best of time with the best aiming settings so that you guys can shred your opponents and enjoy yourself as you slay out some zombies or some other sort of foes and destroy everybody here in Modern Warfare 2. My name is Hero and I'm one of the top performing players of Modern Warfare 2. I have so many feats with multiple weapons, a nuke with every single gun in this game. I'm not lying, if you go to the search bar and type in the name of any gun and Hero MW2, you will find my video with that gun. It's actually crazy. I have over 1100 MGB nukes on the game, which is just insane to think about. And I have rain play loadout videos to help improve the audience that watches me and keep them on top of their game in both Modern Warfare 2 rain play and Warzone 2 rain play. And the reason that I state all of this, well, from the bottom of my heart, I just want you guys to perform to the best of your possible level within this final seasonal update for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. I've got you guys equipped with the best aiming settings, the best sensitivities, the best audio settings, the best graphic settings, both on console and on PC, so that you guys can just have fun here for these last couple of months. So if you're excited, let's go ahead and rock and roll. So what's up guys, here we are with my settings. And before we go into them, I just wanna remind you guys that there's gonna be something here for everybody. I'm gonna be covering both PC and even console settings, as you guys will see kind of later in the video. But a lot of the settings do overlap on every platform. So I hope there's something you can take away from this video. Uh, usually, you know, when it comes to these seasonal updates, I always show off my settings because people are always asking like what my recent settings are. And I usually don't change too much because these are the best settings within Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. So you won't see too much, you know, change. So don't be mad about that. You know, if you end up using some of my settings and adopting some of them, hopefully they'll help you in the future. And I hope that this video helps you, uh, you know, enjoy your last couple months of Modern Warfare 2, or if you decide to play Modern Warfare 2 over Modern Warfare 3. And these settings should help for Modern Warfare 3 as well because these settings are gonna be necessarily pretty similar. Before moving forward, let me know in the comment section below what your KD is currently with the beginning of season six here. It'd be interesting to see, you know, your KD now. And if you revisit this video, like later on with the end of MW2, before we go into MW3, you can check how your KD has kind of progressed uh, within the season, which is always nice to see. I just want my settings to help you. And if they do, or you just enjoyed this video, make sure you guys drop a like in the video, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications. I upload high scoring gameplays with nukes, uh, you know, funny moments, entertaining gameplay and all of that. Sometimes rank play, which I'll upload tomorrow, actually. So make sure you're staying tuned for all that. And there's a variety of, of awesome content here in the channel. And my second channel as well, where I upload Warzone too. So hopefully you stick around. We're on the road 300k. And just uh, stay amazing. Without further ado, let's talk about these settings. Starting it off, we're starting off with controller settings. I'm not really a keyboard and mouse player, so we're not really talking about keyboard and mouse. But when it comes to my button layout... I always play on bumper jumper tactical flipped and you flip by pressing this button same with warzone it's all the same and what bumper jumper tactical flipped uh, you know means in case you're curious is that when i play the game i jump with l2 which is actually insane so i jump with this button i heal with x using my stim shots i drop shot with r3 and I've been playing this way since Black Ops 3 back in 2015. So I've been on this controller layout for eight years and it's going to help you with jump shotting, drop shotting. It basically makes your movement a lot more fluid and it's helped me so much. Even, you know, past the Jetpack games and now on the Boots on the Ground games, I never changed because it really has helped my gameplay and helped me grow as a better player. So try it out for yourselves. You know, you don't have to use all this. You know, uh, I heard a sticky move is usually pretty good for people or just regular defaults. This just makes it so I don't have to buy like a controller or anything uh, if I if I don't want to. Because some people like the, the PS5 DualSense Edge controller, which I do have on my PS5, but I don't even use the paddles or anything because I just love running Bumper Jumper Tactical Flipped. So yeah, and on PC, I play on a, a PS4 controller. So I have both sets of worlds. Moving onwards, we got Bumper Ping at off, Stick Layout Preset Default, Controller Vibration Off. It's just my own personal preference. If you want to keep it on, you can go ahead and keep it on. Uh, it's more so placebo in my opinion. When it comes to horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, I love 8 because it's right in the middle of not being too fast and not being too slow. The advantages with having a sensitivity at like 20 
is that you can freaking turn on people if they end up behind you a lot more quickly. But the downside is that you might not be able to aim as efficiently and thus a lower setting would probably uh, fit you better so that you can aim better when it comes to certain situations. Now, when it comes to the flip side, you know, saying you, you play on a one sensitivity, you're gonna be a lot more accurate than, than most other players very easily. But if somebody sneaks up behind you, it's gonna be very hard to turn on them because your sensitivity is gonna be a little bit too slow. So I like it right in the middle just because it's just enough speed to turn on people and I can still keep my aim uh, you know, on deck. At the end of the day, it's personal preference. You know, if you play on six and you love six, go six. If you love 10 and you love the faster sensitivity, you know, play on 10. Just mess around with your sensitivities, see what works for you. My eight is just a preference at the end of the day. Uh, ADS sensor multiplier here is de uh, disabled because I have something in the advanced settings that cancels this and kind of overrides it. Sensitivity multiplier is all one. Vertical aim max is all standard. Uh, gameplay and ADS behavior hold. I think this is all default here. Automatic sprint is off. I don't like automatic sprint being on because if you have automatic sprint on, you're not going to be in full control of your player slash your controller in a sense because if you're running to a camper, you're not going to be able to like stop as quickly as you would want to. So I recommend having this off just because in the end it does, you know, uh, hurt your gameplay more than help it in my opinion. And this will help you combat campers a lot more efficiently. So there's a lot of campers in this game. Equipment behavior, hold, weapon mount is the same. Interact slash reload behavior. I love this on Prioritize Interact when it comes to Warzone 2. When it comes to multiplayer, I keep it on tap to reload. Uh, the reason why for all my Warzone 2 players out there that I love Prioritize Interact is because instead of holding square or whatever the key or button is that you use to pick up your loot, uh, instead of a hold, it's a tap. So you're able to loot a lot faster. You're able to open doors faster. Uh, it, everything's a lot more responsive in that sense, and that's why I recommend Prioritize Interact uh, over Tap to Reload. So, yeah, Tap to Reload for multiplayer and uh, Prioritize Interact for Warzone. And an armor plate behavior should be Apply All. That really helps in Warzone, especially if you're running away from enemies and plating up on your way. When it comes to target aim assist, I like to keep it on because, you know, aim assist on controllers is apparently overpowered to these PC players. So we're going to piss them off a bit. Aim assist type is going to be default because it's just usually the best aim assist to use. Some people like Black Ops as well. They're both pretty much the same because they keep your aim assist active at all situations. I wouldn't recommend precision or focusing because at times the aim assist will turn off and that's definitely going to throw off your aim uh, with an inconsistency, you know, in aim assist. You know, you, you want to be either have no aim assist or have aim assist on because an inconsistency can kind of mess up your aim. So either have default or black ops or just have aim assist off and play that way. I know some, I used to play without aim assist black, back in black ops too. And that's actually not too bad at it. I can't lie. I didn't know I had it off by the way. When I turned it on, it became better. So maybe it is OP. And moving forward, we got aim response curve type at dynamic, which is the best aim response curve type. It keeps your aim a little bit more stickier. It allows you to be more precise with your targets. And you know, this, subject has been tackled in you know videos of throughout the last four years since the warzone era of cods and it's been agreed that dynamic is the best plus a lot of pros use dynamic as well it just feels the best but at the end of the day you know use what you want if you standard or linear feels better for you stick with that but I most would agree that aim, uh, dynamic is the, the best way to go 80 cents multiplier focus uh, one set, uh, transition timing instant custom sensitivity per zoom is on and I like having low zoom and uh, 2x, 3x uh, zoom optics at 0.9, so I can be a little bit more accurate when I aim, aim down sights. But when it comes to the higher zoom optics, they already feel very, you know, uh, sluggish. So I wanna like speed them up a little bit, and that's why I have them at 1.20 uh, for the rest of them. You can keep them all the same, or you can keep them all different. You know, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. When it comes to inputs dead zone, I have pretty much everything on default. And the reason why I don't really move uh, left and right trigger to zero, which is actually really good, I would recommend putting it to, to zero, is because I'm very sensitive with my uh, my triggers. And sometimes I'll throw a grenade or something by accident when I don't mean to. So that's why I still have some dead zone in there just to kind of help me. But uh, yeah, definitely lower left trigger and right trigger if you feel like it won't uh, hurt you in any way, because it'll make you make you a lot more responsive. Controller orientation up. When it comes to gyro aiming or any of these gyro settings, I don't really mess with those. Uh, you can mess with it if you want, but that's not really what I play with personally. But it could be something to experiment with. That might be good for a video, low key. Uh, I'll think about it in the future. When it comes to uh, sprint slash tactical sprint behavior, I put on toggle. Auto move forward is pretty much the same deal as automatic sprint. I keep it off to combat campers a lot more efficiently. Tactical sprint behavior, double tab. I think this is all default here. Uh, default, standard. Some people like inverted for this, for like climbing on top of the rooftops when it comes to Vondel. 
So if you want to invert this, you could in, in, the, in the case of Warzone 2 on Vondel, but I'm fine with just keeping it on standard personally. Uh, parachute I'll deploy, I like to keep it off so I have more in control for how I parachute into the map. And then everything else here is default, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, that looks like to be it. So let's go over to uh, some PC graphics settings real quick. So when it comes to my PC graphics settings, these are my, you know, my, my specs, uh, my rig specs, I guess you can say. I have a 3080 Ti. I've got a nice little CPU and like 64 gigabytes of RAM. I'll show it on screen. And uh, these are the rest of my display settings in case you guys are sort of curious. When it comes to quality, this is where the real stuff starts. I have render resolution at 85. And just to keep so you guys know, I play on a 1440p monitor with 144 hertz. So for me, lowering my render resolution isn't really a bad thing because I already can see the game very clearly. If you play on like 1080p, I would recommend that you keep this at like 100 if possible, because then you'll be able to really see the game. I keep it at 85 just so I can get a couple more frames. It's a little bit like a, as a hybrid between a 1080p and a 1440p monitor and the game still looks clean to me and to you guys i'm assuming and i get those extra frames so it's up to you how you want to keep it i would recommend uh 80 to 85 if you're or like even 90 if you're having trouble getting some good frames but if you can keep it at 100 and you have good frames at 100 hey keep it that way it, it's pretty much the best way to go uh, fidelity fx cast for upscale sharpening at 90 is the best way to go SMA T2X for anti-aliasing, low anti-aliasing quality, video memory scale 80. If you're having like trouble at 90 though, uh, you could lower it to 80. I, I had a little bit of trouble, so I keep it at 80, but you could use it at 90. If everything works well at 90, then use that. When it comes to details and textures, I like texture resolution being out low, so I can uh, have more frames on my PC because I, you know, I stream and record and do everything on my PC because I don't have a dual PC setup and I want as much frames as possible. Plus the game is still gonna look very nice. Uh, even on very low, I'll get more frames, but I want the game to look nice for you guys. So that's why I keep it on low. If you wanted to get the most frames though, very low is pretty nice for multiplayer. Uh, texture filter on, on a scroll grip, I have it at normal. You could have it on low for a little bit more frames, but I have it on normal to make the game look nice for you guys. Nearby level detail low, distant level detail high, because I do want to see things in the distance a little bit more easily. Cluster draw distance short, particle quality, particle quality level are both on high, so I can like see tracer effects a little bit better. Bullet impacts on, just so you know it looks a little bit better for, for videos. Persistent damage layers off, shader quality low, tessellation off, on demand texture streaming off, streaming quality low, volumetric low, uh, physics quality off, water quality default, or sometimes I like water wetness. Shadow map resolution very low, screen space shadows off shadow quality off or low spot cash low particle lighting on uh, normal just because once again tracer effects or whatever ambient occlusion off ssr off uh static reflection quality low weather grid volume is low low latency on now some people uh will like on plus boost or people will like it off for me personally i think most pcs will uh perform better on on just because that's just how it kind of is for some people most people's rigs i would say but if you feel like you're not like obviously test your your PC on each of these settings and see what you like most. But I think on is is the most common setting for people to have the the best feel on their PC. Depth of field is going to be off because when you have it on, it kind of blurs in the distance, and you don't want that. That's you know you don't want any sort of blur because you want to see everything as clearly as possible on your screen. When it comes to world motion blur and weapon motion blur, you gotta keep these off because especially world motion blur because if you're turning around and the world looks a little bit blurry, uh, having blur around a corner, it means it's gonna be a lot harder for you to spot somebody, especially if they're like appearing out of a window. Everything just looks the same and it's just not good for your gameplay. You can keep this on for like campaign or something, but if you're trying to, you know, be competitive, you gotta keep these off. Film grain zero, pretty much same story uh, as the previous effects. Next up, we got field of view being at 120. I like to maximize my field of view, but more importantly, ADS field of view is on independent. Now, most YouTubers slash content creators love affected because uh, it makes it so that you're always at 120 FOV, even when you ADS. And the reason why I don't think that's necessarily effective is because uh, when you're ADSing, you're trying to focus in on something. So having a lower FOV is actually better for ADSing because it makes the objects that you're ADSing at appear a lot bigger. And thus you're gonna be able to control your recoil a lot better. You'll be more on point. And that's the way I like to think of it. And that's exactly what independent does. Uh, when you ADS with independent field of view on, it, it turns the FOV to 80. 
and thus your FOV becomes bigger and everything becomes a little bit bigger when you ADS, thus making aiming at, you know, farther range targets a lot more easier. I've been playing this way ever since I played Warzone on PC back in Cold War, and it's helped my gameplay a lot personally. So if you want to play on Affected, go for Affected, but i am be one of those dudes that, uh, that, you know, goes against the grain, I guess you can say. Weapon field of view is going to be wide, so the weapon looks as small as possible, so it doesn't take up, like, much of your screen. Third person field of view is going to be maxed out at 90, just like with first person FOV. Vehicle field of view is going to be wide for the same reason that you don't want uh, the vehicle taking up too much of your space or your screen. Uh, first person and third person camera movement both have to be at least 50%. So make it at 50%. If you have it at 100% default, your your game is going to be a little bit too shaky. It's, you'll be feeling a little bit more recoil, which is not good. You want to be as accurate as possible. Who cares about realism? You know what I mean? And this will help your gameplay a lot more than anything else. And that should be it here for the PC graphics settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, turn on my PS5 and go to the console graphics settings to show you guys. And now here we are on my console graphics settings on my PS5 in specific, and but it should still apply to the PS4 a little bit as well as the Xbox consoles. Uh, for on-demand taxes streaming, you keep that off. World motion blur and weapon motion blur should both be off. I talked about this in depth uh, within the PC graphics settings as to why you should keep it off. Same with fill grain, it should be at zero. Depth of field should be at zero. Basically, you just don't want any blur because it kind of is going to make you miss targets in a sense. Fidelity FX cache should be on and I put that at 52, though you could increase it if you want. Just make sure it's higher than 50. Uh, if you're on PS5 or if you're on Xbox Series X slash S and you have a 144 hertz monitor or 120 hertz monitor and you have like an HDMI 2.0 or 2.1 cable, then you can put on 120 hertz refresh rate. This should be on because it'll help you a ton in winning gunfights against PC players who have higher than 60 frames. And this is why it's better to game on a PS5 and the Xbox Series consoles because they actually can go to 120, whereas the old consoles, they're on 60 frames and you're kind of at a disadvantage there. So definitely put this on. It'll definitely help you play against PC players and be ahead of the game. Uh, field of view should be max. I've talked about this in the uh, the PC section. If you guys more, want more info on that, ADS field of view independent and weapon field of view wide. Uh, for you know better ability to kill people at longer ranges and you know so your weapon isn't as big third person field of view 90 and vehicle field of view wide for pretty much similar reasons that i've already stated before first person and third person camera movement make sure these are at 50 percent if you have them at 100 or 75 you're going to be experiencing way more recoil and you're going to be missing shots and that wouldn't be a good thing to deal with and then when it comes to eco mode, you can keep them on minimal, but I recommend off. But I mean, minimal is fine too. It doesn't hurt you too much. I uh, just don't have it on full in my opinion. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the console graphics settings. And now let's head over back to my PC and show you guys my audio settings. And now that I've shown you guys console graphics settings, let's go back on PC here and let's show off the, the audio here for PC, which I typically use on my consoles anyways. Uh, when it comes to audio mix, I use PC just because ever since I switched to it, it's been pretty nice. But typically any of these are pretty good. People just like the default home theater and it works out well. Uh, some people like headphone based boost, which is what I used to use uh, before I switched to PC. So honestly, just mess around with any of these and see what you like the most. I think the top three are gonna be home theater though, uh, headphones based boost and PC, maybe even headphones, but that's how I like playing. I don't feel like it makes too much of a difference. When it comes to master volume here, uh, you either wanna keep it super high or at 100, I don't have it at 100 because if I was put at 100, I wouldn't have ears. <laughs> this game is super freaking loud and yeah, I love hearing my footsteps, but I don't want my ears getting destroyed by VTOLs and stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's how you should have it. Gameplay music volume should be very, very low. You don't want to hear music at all because you're trying to focus more on footsteps, you know, audio cues and more important stuff than the music, even though the music in this game is pretty good. Dialogue volume is going to be at 30 just so you can hear out callouts. Callouts are very important. Uh, so that you know if some you know an enemy cruise missile is coming in or you know flags are being captured you're able to hear it and be more uh, responsive in that way so you'd still want some dialogue volume but the most important volume is effects volume which you keep at 100 so you can hear footsteps easily hear you know kill streaks being called in hear glass breaking or whatever the case is this is a must for it in general in gaming voice chat volume might keep it at 50 some people have to be having some messed up mics so i cannot have this at 100 uh, but sometimes if I want to hear somebody a little bit better, I'll, I'll push this up. Cinematic music volume is going to be at 6, so I can hear the music, uh, I think, in the menus. It also applies for this, which is nice. And War Tracks volume, I mean, that's kind of personal preference at that point. Probably at 0, though, so you don't get distracted in Warzone. 
uh, speaker. Oh, I think this is all like unimportant settings. It's all like default stuff. Uh, anything else? Oh, subtitles. Uh, you should, if I wasn't a content creator, I'd probably have it on because it's, you, you know, you could hear call outs and stuff, but it's better if you can read the call outs because if you're reading something saying, like if there's a lot of action going on, like on shipment, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of call outs being made and you're able to read a call out faster than it's being uh, processed with audio, then you'll be able to be more responsive and be able to, you know, prepare for an attack or whatever the case is in that way. So I would recommend subtitles on. Only reason I have it off is because it would look kind of ugly for videos. So uh, that's my opinion, but up to you if you want to keep it on or off. Tinnitus sound could be off or on depending on how you feel about the, the tinnitus sound in this game. And then uh, this should be uh, pretty much personal preference. So with that being said, let's finish things off with the interface settings here. We've got uh, menu, text size, text chat size. All of this is personal preference, color customization. You know, customize the colors the way you want. I just keep it on default personally. Uh, when it comes to subtitles, we've already talked about this in interface. I don't know why they have like two uh, subtitles places, but it's whatever. Uh, HUD or HUD, I usually keep it at 100. Some people like like lowering this so that the radar is more towards the middle and you can see the, the mini map a little bit better. I just think it looks ugly for gameplay, but hey, if you want to mess with this being at what? Like, I think it's 60? I think it goes down to? No. Uh, there's a certain, like, I think if you put it at 60 or something, it's like, it makes it a lot closer to, like, the middle of the screen. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, you know, it helps, if it helps you see the minimap better, hey, go for it. Minimap shape, though, is going to be square. It has to be square. Because if you make it a circle, then you're going to be losing surface area and you won't be able to see too many of the red dots on your map. So keeping it on square is the best way to go. Minimap rotation on, horizontal compass on, uh, crosshair static. You know, compass is important because you're able to see the red dots on the compass whenever they shoot their gun without a UAV. So that's always important. And crosshairs, I like static so that I don't have as much dizziness going on or like wobbliness with my crosshairs and I feel like I'm a little bit more accurate. It's technically like a placebo effect, but it helps me personally, I feel like. Hit marker visuals on, damage based hit markers on, uh, full name there, in-game test chat on, fade after five seconds, center dots. This is pretty nice because having a little dot in the middle, I feel like kind of helps you uh, be a little bit more precise. Uh, it might be, you know, it's a little bit of personal preference. You know, I have it on largest as well. I just feel like it helps my aim personally. And then when it comes to telemetry here, I have it so that it always shows my FPS, they're related to the same packet loss, so I can know how many frames I'm doing and see if there's something wrong with the computer, and if to serve related to the same packet loss to see if I'm lagging of any sort. And then the rest is, you know, obviously optional if you want. Is there anything else here? Oh, inverted flash. If you want the white flash, you want the really dark flash, it's up to you. Uh, you know, deal with your poison. You know, deal with your PC potentially looking like it's shutting down or deal with getting flashed and going to a night doctor in a couple years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not that bad, or is it that bad these days? I don't know. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for settings. Let me know what you guys think about these settings. Hopefully they help you. I really don't change my settings much, like I said. I'll be running these exa exact same settings in Modern Warfare 3, and they'll probably introduce some new settings, and I'll be informing you guys of that as well. But uh, it's been a great year here on Modern Warfare 2, and you know, use these settings to the fullest and see if you succeed. Rain play loadouts tomorrow. Drop a like, subscribe, you new channel with notifications if these settings help you or if you just enjoy, uh, you know, seeing what settings I use. And uh, keep being the best. I really freaking love you all. Follow me on everything. Uh